Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this redgamingtech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with NVIDIA, as the company are preparing to launch the RTX 2080 Supercard. Much like other cards in the Super lineup, we see bumped specs from their vanilla counterparts. Well, today, another benchmark for the RTX 2080 Super has appeared online. The RTX 2080 Super does have bump specifications, much like the rest of the Super lineup compared to its vanilla counterpart. The vanilla RTX 2080 has 2,944 CUDA cores, and this is compared to 3,072 of the TU-104-450 core, which is found in the RTX 2080 Super. And we also have faster memory as well, 14 GBPS, of course, for the 2080, whereas the Super variant uh, still has 8 gigabytes of memory on a 256-bit bus. However, uh, the memory is now clocked at 15.5 GBPS. So we have a slightly bumped uh, memory bandwidth to now 496 gigabytes per second. Uh, the boost frequency is said to be 1815 megahertz, but the base frequency uh, is just 1650 megahertz. So the benchmark that's leaked is Final Fantasy uh, 15. So this card is coming in at around 7.5% faster than the RTX 2080 Vanilla. So it is still significantly slower than the RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, the Ti in 1440p scores 9,921 points, whereas the Vanilla 2080 uh, scores 8,058 points, whereas the Super... Uh, increases this to 8,663 points. So basically, a 600 points-ish increase from the uh, 2080 to the 2080 Super. However, you are still significantly slower. Uh, it's around 1,100 points slower compared to the 2080 Ti. But still, considering that you're essentially going to be paying the same price, it's not terrible so basically, once again, this is just shifting NVIDIA's line of uh, cards around a little bit. And yeah, I think overall it's a fairly impressive gain, just not quite maybe as much as what we'd have hoped. Some people are expecting it to be a little more than that, around 10%. But I don't think 7.5% is exactly anything to sneeze over. And we're going to be seeing more of this card, obviously, in the next couple of days as it fleshes out the remainder of the Super lineup because... NVIDIA are insisting we will not get the RTX 2080 Ti Super Edition. Um, and to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't get the Super Edition, because otherwise it would be really close otherwise to the RTX uh, Titan, or rather the Titan RTX to give it its proper name. But then again, maybe NVIDIA will change their mind closer to the end of the life of the card. The next rumours I want to discuss concern a Switch 2 and also the launch game for the system, which is known as Zelda Breath of the Darkness. As the name Switch 2 may imply, it is allegedly a considerably more powerful system than what we currently have with the Switch, but it will only be a home console. At least these are the rumours that are circulating from the website 4chan and several other News outlets excuse me, are already reporting on this. And I'm going to do the same, if only to say that I heavily doubt that this stuff is true. So, let's go through the rumours real quick. Currently, Nintendo have just launched the Switch Lite, and of course they're also releasing a new variant of the Switch will have considerably better battery life, which is definitely a good thing, although I will say I'm a little disappointed that the Switch Lite doesn't have... A substantially better uh, battery life as well. It's only 30 minutes better compared to the original model. But anyway, so according to these rumors, there will be a quote bifocal strategy for the expansion of the Switch family. And this will mean that during 2020, Nintendo will officially announce a new Nintendo Switch. Uh, the name has not been finalized yet, it's only known internally as Switch 2 and is being designed to be a much more powerful unit than the original Switch, 
And I and according to these rumors, the Switch 2 is going to achieve a technical performance level compared to that of the base model PS4. But according to this anyway, Nintendo are having quote enormous difficulty in creating a technical architecture that's that powerful for the console. The Switch 2 is designed to be only a home console, it is not portable, and therefore the Switch 2 will not replace the original Switch, instead it will accompany it. The console will launch in either 2020, the late period so we can assume holidays, or early 2021, and this will be pushed with a new Zelda game, which is known as Zelda Breath of the Darkness. Now, there are several f issues I have with these rumours, and I'm not going to go into all of them. But, the first of which is the name of the Zelda game. It is very, very, very unlikely that Nintendo would name uh, a game like that, a game like this. Um, we have Breath of the Wild 2. I suspect that they would probably just want to capitalise on that, given it's a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. So, yeah, there's that. The second of all, the second thing is that the... Uh, system is only going to be a home console. I'm just, I'm not really sure about that. Um, I imagine that Nintendo would want to carry on the legacy of having a system which could operate in both modes. And this is further compounded because they're stating that uh, Nintendo are having issues creating a console which is as powerful as the base model PS4, yet they are only having the system to operate within your home. And that just doesn't make any sense. It basically makes Nintendo almost sound incompetent. And given that, according to these rumours, the system wouldn't have the uh, power constraints of a portable system, and none of the form factor issues as well, they could basically make the thing a size of uh, a refrigerator if they wanted. Obviously, they wouldn't do that, but you kind of get my point. It just doesn't make sense for them to then have the technical issues of being able to design a system which is as powerful as the PS4. It just it, just, it makes no sense at all to me. Uh, so I think that some of this is probably relatively accurate. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a new Switch which comes out, uh, or a new console from Nintendo which we start really hearing about by late 2020, uh, or maybe gets released in 2021. Next up are a couple of pieces of AMD news, the first of which is Biostar are formally enabling PCIe 4 for a couple of its motherboards, well actually four of its motherboards. So if you own a B450MH, a B45M2, an X470 GT8, or an X470 GTN, then good news everyone, you are now able to run uh, the top most slot of your board at 4.0 specification. But this does come with an issue, and that is that you will basically be locked down to an old BIOS. New BIOSes will not support PCIe 3.0 because AMD really don't like it. I recently covered Asus, who have done very much the same thing as what Biostar are doing here, and... Yeah, if you really need PCIe 4.0, uh, and obviously your usage uh, scenario is going to be a little bit different, then it might be worth doing the update. But if you have any technical issues, for example, uh, memory compatibility or you know instability or any type of issue that you need to update the BIOS, or even performance improvement from the CPU side of things from AMD, well, you then are going to lose PCIe 3.0, so it's kind of a good PR move from for these companies to do this, uh, because then, of course, they can kind of shift the blame to AMD to be like, hey, uh, we tried, we honestly did. The last piece of news for today is AMD's CTO, Mark Papermaster, has actually confirmed that AMD will be joining the Compute Express Link CXL Consortium. So this group has actually really been led by Intel, but key members include Google and Microsoft as well. And CXL is currently on its 1.0 specification and uses the PCIe 5.0 physical infrastructure. Basically, that means that 
uh, signaling and electrical and so on basically is from PCIe for uh, 5.0. I was about to say 4.0, uh, but it means that you have a coherent low latency interconnect protocol. So basically, this means that the CPU and other resources can easily share data without uh, complex memory management. So for the sake of argument, GPUs, accelerators, FPGAs, lots of other shiny stuff, and this means that uh, things such as machine learning and artificial intelligence are really going to benefit from this. There are several other protocols which do exist, um, including CCIX and Gen Z, plus uh, Open CAPI, or CAPI if you prefer, uh, which all claim to do very much the same thing, cache coherency and so on. In a blog post, Mark Papermaster went on to say that I'm pleased to announce AMD has joined other industry leaders in Compute Express Link. CXL is an open standard interconnect offering high bandwidth, low latency connectivity between host processes, systems and devices such as accelerator cards, memory buffers and smart I.O. devices designed to address increasing demands of high-performance computational workloads. CXL targets heterogeneous processing and memory systems across a range of high-performance computing applications by enabling coherency and memory semantics between processes and systems. And this is increasingly important as processing data in artificial intelligence and machine learning requires a diverse mix of scalar, vector, matrix, and spatial architectures across a range of accelerator options, end quote. AMD are not necessarily committing themselves to using CXL, but what they are doing is essentially getting to have a say in the uh, development of the protocol in case it does happen to appear in future AMD products, which I think is probably the smartest thing that they can do, because obviously if they don't have any say at all in the development of the protocol, that may kind of bite them in the in the butt in a couple of years' time. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, then consider dropping a like on it, because it helps us out a ton, and get subscribed to the channel if you've not already done so. You can also find links to various social media platforms in the description of the video along with amazon affiliate links and patreon don't feel like you have to use them but hey if you choose to support us that way it would be greatly appreciated and a new affiliate link is for green man gaming if you're not familiar with them they're actually an authorized uh, key seller they actually work with publishers such as bethesda sega capcom and so on so all of the keys are legitimate so it's not like g2a or something like gray market so, yeah, they've got a sale going on right now, so go ahead and check them out if you so wish to. With all of that said, take care of yourselves, have a great day, bye for now.